Testing, testing. Hey, 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 everybody. Woo! It's time to play some music. I was going to get started earlier on this, but um, yeah, I had some computer stuff to clean up. So, hey, let's just get started. Uh, hey, everybody. Um, it's been a long time, been a long time since I rock and roll. Um, yeah, life happens, as I said in the comments. And gosh, a lot of cool stuff happening, but just haven't had time to get around to playing some classical music. And it's time to get back to playing some classical music. I've got students showing up here in about an hour, so I'm just going to start stumbling through some of these songs. I'm going to start at the beginning and just keep going through. If you have any special requests of all those songs that uh, I flashed on the screen there at the beginning, let me know. Otherwise, um, yeah, let me know how you're doing. Hey, 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 love you lots. Here we go.
right, that's Chopin for you. Prelude in D flat. Opus 28, number 15, commonly known as the Raindrop Prelude, which is appropriate because we've had a lot of raindrops here. We got teased with one or two really hot days of summer early in the spring here in Eugene, Oregon, but lately it's been weird. Rain and hail and blustery and it's good for skiing. Went skiing for the first time in three or four years the other day on Sunday and it was beautiful powder and warmish and yeah, let's quit talking and do some more music. We're going to do um, Beethoven. Sounds like it's in the same key because D flat is the same as C sharp and this one is a sonata in C sharp minor that we all love and know as the Moonlight Sonata, movement one.
Beethoven, Moonlight Sonata, C sharp minor. Love that piece. I think it's one of the best works of art, hands down, not just music. I love that piece. Um, you know, one thing, interesting little side note here. Uh, one of the reasons I'm getting my fingers back around these keys is because I have to get them shaped just calisthenically for a, a Beatles show coming up at the shed next month for John Haynes' Give Me Sight for benefit. Uh, we're going to have a rehearsal this evening, actually. And yeah, you know, notes or no notes, it's just you got your fingers have just got to be in shape, you know, just like sports. And so, yeah, classical music is a good way to get my fingers moving again. And interesting side note, uh, that last piece, Moonlight Sonata, has an interesting Beatles connection because uh, one time John Lennon walked in and heard Yoko playing the Moonlight Sonata on the piano, and he thought, oh, wouldn't it be clever if I tried to play that backwards and it was something like... <laughs> song came from. Interesting little tidbit of trivia for y'all. Oh, Stanley gave me the nicest comment. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, well, you know, just wait uh, when I have these memorized again. You know, my, my teacher in college said that her teacher told her that you don't really learn a song, you don't really start learning a song until you have it memorized, which was completely counterintuitive to my experience growing up through high school where it's like, oh my god, spring recital's coming up, I've got to get it memorized, ah! Oh, shoot, done, finished, played it in front of people, take your bow, relax. But actually, you know, the truth is, is once you get past the nuts and bolts of the notes and the timing, then you've got all of this creative energy to start putting into the dynamics and the articulation and the interpretation, so yeah. We're gonna do the. We're gonna get these pieces back. And but thank you, Stanley. Yeah, they're eh, kind of like riding a bike, I guess. But anyways, um, let's see here. Oh yeah, of course, Eric. Yes, I was expecting that you might see us on see me speaking in the royal plural now. Sorry, uh, on. Facebook. So, yeah, Stanley's on YouTube. Eric's on Facebook. Hey, everybody else out there watching. Uh, I've got a student coming here in like 40 minutes, so we're just going to keep plowing through. This one is a ragtime piece, one of the three greats of ragtime, um, along with Scott Joplin and the other guy that I should know, sorry. But this guy is named Joseph Lamb, and this is a piece that was kind of unknown to me until a couple years ago called the Ragtime Nightingale. And this is probably going to be a lot more stumbling than those other ones, so bear with me. Here we go.
Ragtime Nightingale by Joseph Lamb. One of the latest pieces that I play. Going back to 1915. I think the only one more recent that is the the um, Gershwin, the Rhapsody in Blue, which I think was like 30, let's see, what does it say, 27? Oh, 1927. Okay, so yeah, not much later than Ragtime Nightingale. Oh, we're only uh, at 3.23, so I got students at 4 o'clock here, and I think, yeah, first students at 4 o'clock, because my 15, 3.15 got switched to, to Wednesdays. Um, let's see. Mm. Awesome, well, so let's just keep going. Um, yeah, the next one, uh, the next couple of pieces here are un et deux, uh, I should say, premier et deuxième de les, de les deux arabesques, the two arabesques by Claude Debussy, which are just some of my favorite, favorite music to play. This is Impressionism, makes you think of Monet and Manet and those other little, all those, uh, not little, other, all those other painters that paint with little dots, that's what I was going to say, and make things seem all fuzzy to the eyes. Well, this is kind of like, yeah, got that nice, warm, fuzzy feeling to it, very watery sounding. Uh, so here they are with no other, no more further ado, De Arabesques by Claude Debussy. <laughs>
All right, love me some WC on an afternoon with the sun coming out after it's been raining here in Eugene, Oregon. All right, what time we got? We got uh, 3.34. That's 26 minutes to do the Rhapsody. I don't know if we're going to make it through. It's the next one in line, though. So we'll see what happens. This is the <laughs> stumblingest through one of all, I'm sure. But here we go. George Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue. We'll try to fit it in before Kaya gets here.
with eight minutes to spare. <laughs> Yay. All right. Well, we got some kinks to work on on that one, but that went way better than I was expecting. So, whew. Okay, so I got to get ready. Actually, you know, um, we got time for one more because this next one's really short. This one's a really thick one, too. This was one of my great aunt's favorite. This is her piano that I inherited, my dear Aunt Lois. I called her Loey. She was awesome, the inspiration of my life. And this was the piano that I grew up with at her farmhouse. And this was one of her favorite pieces by Sergei Rachmaninoff, who she actually saw when she was uh, briefly studying piano, I think, uh, music at Northwestern back in the, gosh, late 20s, early 30s or something. She actually saw Rachmaninoff. The guy had hands that could span an octave and a half. And that's why he would wrote write pieces like this. This is Rachmaninoff's prelude in C-sharp minor. We'll see what happens. Hey, thanks for listening, everybody. I got through a lot more of those than I thought. 
I would today. So next time we'll get through the rest of them. We got some Hinostera coming up, some Prokofiev, some Bach, some Sati, 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 Sati. I don't know how you say it. And then, uh, yeah, some Scott Joplin to finish up with. But we'll do that next time. Thank you so much for everybody that hung out and listened to me get the ball rolling again. And, um, yeah, to all of you who will be listening um, to this video in the future, if you catch up with this later. Hope you're all doing well out there. Stay strong, stay kind, and love you all. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>